If no, we're live. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, we're just waiting on a few more people arriving. Um, so thanks for uh, taking some time out on your Friday afternoon. We've got about an hour um, and uh, I'll do some introductions. My name's Neil Manning, so I'm in charge of the School of Art and Design. And I'm not sure whether you can see Katie, but we think that you can. And Katie is one of our current UAL Foundation Diploma students. So she's going to um, help give you a bit of a student perspective of what it's like studying in the School of Art and Design. And she's also kindly allowed us to show her, um, show you her portfolio. So the way this afternoon is going to work is um, I'm going to present uh, um, a presentation. There's quite a few slides, but please don't worry, I'm going to go through it fairly quickly, but then I will post it in the chat so that you can download it uh, uh, and we can send it out. You can get the information on the website as well. And once I've gone through that, um, we will uh, um, then have a look at uh, Katie's portfolio and she's going to describe a little bit about her journey to study here um, at the School of Art and Design. <clears throat> and you can post some questions, um, you know, in the chat um, as you go along and then we'll open it up for some questions and answers at the end and that should take us up to about an hour um, in, in total. Um, we are recording this, so if you post um, a question in the chat. You can make it anonymous if you don't want your name shown. So please just do, choose that option, okay? So any IT problems, just bear with us um, and we'll get through it. So I'm now going to open up the presentation. Um, I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. It takes a little bit of time, but hopefully it will answer some of your questions. So who are we? Um, we're the School of Art and Design. <clears throat> and we're based within the Creative Industries faculty at Edinburgh College. All of our courses are normally based at our Granton campus on the north side of uh, Edinburgh. We're a large school. Um, we've got over 22 full-time courses spanning a range of different levels of further education, and higher education. We can have up to 800 students a year, so we're the size of a, a fairly large high school and 40 members of staff. Um, and basically what we're really keen on is to receive an application from yourself, help you on your journey to become a successful artist and designer. Um, and as you study with us uh, and work your way through our courses uh, and maybe go off into employment or further study, <clears throat> we have great links with uh, international partners. We do study trips. And we've got great relationships with all the major art schools um, in Scotland and across the rest of the UK. And you can see down there at the bottom, 98% of our students go on to either further study or employment, which is, you know, a great uh, success. So <clears throat> we work with two awarding bodies, uh, and that means who you get your qualification from. We have some courses that are from the UAL awarding body. We were the first place in Scotland to deliver these and we're one of their uh, major centres across the UK. UAL stands for University of the Arts London. So that's the largest art school in Europe, one of the top in the world. And they now um, uh, award qualifications uh, at further education. So we're, we're one of their key players. Um, the numbers, when we look at the levels here on the right hand side, that I've put an equivalency in here to, so you can understand it against the Scottish system because the English system and the Scottish system, the numbers are different. So we do a level two diploma, which is uh, broadly equivalent to four national fives. We do a level three diploma, which is very popular. That's equivalent to really one and a half advanced hires. It's got UCAS points that you can see here at pass, merit and distinction, um, which is like, uh, you know, C, B and A grade. And that's the course that can allow you to progress onto foundation course next year or an HND, but also first year at most of the art colleges in Scotland. So it's a very popular course. <clears throat> we also have our level three foundation diploma and this one is the one that's broadly equivalent to first year of a Scottish four-year degree 
it has significantly more UCAS points and most of our students who study on the level three foundation diploma will go on to then study at either H and D level or go straight into second year of a Scottish degree or first year of an English three year degree down south over the border. So that's our UAL courses and, and these are um, multiple groups. So we've got three groups of level three diploma and four groups of foundation diploma. Then we also have to do SQA diplomas in art and design. Um, and you can see on the left hand side, like the UAL courses, we have some further education courses and you can see them listed down here. These are national certificates that are equivalent to broadly hires. Um, all of these courses are eligible for further education funding. And then on the right hand side, we have two year um, specialist higher national diplomas. And they're broadly equivalent to first and second year at university. A lot of our students uh, go straight into third year of a degree after completing these. And you can see there's eight of them there and you know they cover a wide area of both art and design. <clears throat> and those courses are funded in the same way as university. So it's you're you're eligible for SAS funding. Um, and they're specialist. Here is a really kind of complex uh, image of, um, I suppose, a map of our curriculum. And to, to simplify it, um, the left hand side is maybe where you start off. And then the right hand side, which is in the black boxes, is university or maybe employment. And it's about where you join in on your journey coming from the left hand side and then moving through courses to the right hand side um, <clears throat> when you go off into employment or, or go and finish a degree. I think what's important is to note that unlike school, you don't have to go first year, second year, third year, fourth year, all in a line. So for example, you might come on to our UAL level three diploma, which is on the second line of the red boxes in the middle, and that can take you straight onto an HND or straight on to first year of a degree or onto foundation diploma. So in other words, there's lots of different options of ways that you can move forward. So don't feel that if you start at the left hand side, you have to do all of these before you go to university. It depends on how well you do. And, you know, really uh, intrinsically, it's your portfolio. And that's why we're going to have a look at Katie's later on, because as a working artist and designer for the rest of your life, of course, people are interested in qualifications and whether you've got degrees, postgraduates, etc. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> for example, if I, <clears throat> I studied sculpture and if I want to go and get uh, an exhibition somewhere, even with the job that I've got, the person who's running the gallery will want to see my work. So it's your portfolio is like your, the thing that we live and breathe. It's how we, we get work and succeed for the rest of our, our careers. So with that in mind, all of our courses are about your progression um, and you'll all be individual and you'll all be at different stages. Um, and I'm not going to read all of the bits out here on the left hand side, but you can see that within all the courses, there's intrinsic bits that we cover to ensure that your progression can be positive. So we have talks from uh, art colleges where they come in and show portfolios. We give you support with interviews. We do internal HND open days where uh, students can meet the staff who teach the higher level courses and ask them questions a bit like what we're doing now. Um, and also we can help you improve your English qualifications for things like group crits, writing essays, um, presenting your work to an audience, um, and you get some SQA qualifications for that. So it's an integral part of what we do. So I'm going to talk you through a few slides here um, that are about the application process. There's a lot of words, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just briefly talk about the main points, but you can then read this um, to make sure that you, you can follow it. So basically, um, 
the courses are on the website um, and you click on the course uh, that you want to apply and there's an apply button. And so you make your application for the course via the college website or for, your, for, the, for the course uh, that you're interested in. Once you've done that, we will then send you a letter via email with some further guidance, which is a, a kind of a, a streamlined version of what I'm taking you through here. And it will give you an email uh, of, what, of where to send your portfolio and in what format you should do it. Uh, you send your portfolio in. We then review your portfolio um, and your application, and then we make you an offer. And once we've sent you an offer, it's important that you accept it. And then you can start all of your, the process of uh, applying for your funding, whether it's SAS for an HND or via the college for a, a bursary if you're on a further education course. And once you've accepted the place, Near the end of this session, probably in the middle uh, um, onwards of June, we will then ask you to attend an applicant session for the course that we've offered you a place. And that's when we're going to take you through uh, some more details. So it's quite simple. Make an online application. Once you've made your application, we send you the information on how to send your portfolio. You send your portfolio, we review it. We make you an offer, you accept it, and then come to the applicant session. OK. Looks like my presentation has maybe frozen. Oh, apologies there, guys. Um, it froze for a minute. So what should you include in your portfolio? Well, we're going to give you some, uh, 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 show you an example. But basically what we're trying to do is to gauge what level of course will suit you best. Um, we're looking at your creative process um, and I suppose importantly it's about what makes you tick creatively. The more sophisticated your portfolio that shows uh, a more thorough understanding of the creative process and contextual research will allow you to go on to a higher level of course. If we don't think you're ready um, we will offer you an alternative um, and I hope that you will trust us because that is in, in your, your uh, long term interest. Please do, though, when we send out your uh, um, information about submitting your portfolio, please check your email inboxes and your chunk folder on a regular basis. Microsoft have changed a lot of stuff recently. So depending on what email you've got, we're finding that sometimes it goes into people's junk mail. So just keep an eye out for it because you will receive it. The format of your portfolio, we're going to show you an example. We suggest that you make a PowerPoint and put your put your images within it and then save it as a PDF uh, and use a white background as this allows your artwork to really uh, shine out and be the main focus. Um, one of the questions that a lot of people ask us is how many images should I put in and can I put more than one image on a page? So we're going to show you some examples here of how you could do that. So if you imagine each one of these white oblongs here is your a slide in a PowerPoint and the blue bit uh, and, and also the red bit at the, the, the bottom uh, right is your artwork. So we're just suggesting these are some ways that you could do it. So you could have two or more um, uh, images on each slide or page. OK. And you can read over this page to get some more uh, um, advice. So how many pages should you submit? If you're applying to an HND or to the foundation diploma, we would advise you to put 10 to 15 pages um, uh, in your portfolio and then five to ten if you're applying for an NC or a level two or three diploma. You can put links into videos um, but at the end please put in clear scans of the qualifications you have to date and also put in a short personal statement um, about what your work is about and why you're applying to the course that you've chosen. We send this to you um, as well 
uh, about how you save your PowerPoint to a PDF. It's quite simple. Once you've made your PowerPoint, you basically go to the file, the, the arrow at the top, scroll down to the bit where it says export, and it gives you the option to create PDF document. You create it and please title it and save it down with your name and then a hyphen and then the course that you've applied for. OK, so again, this will be sent out to you once we uh, give you the information with the email, but it's the best format to send it in. If you don't have a portfolio at all, you know, please don't worry. We've got um, uh, our UAO level two diploma, which is like an introductory course. It's very successful. Sometimes people do so well on this course that they jump right over and go straight on to foundation diploma or even an HND. But this is some advice here. We would ask you to reply to the portfolio inbox and say, look, I don't have a portfolio. In other words, confirm that. But we would also ask you to just take a little bit of time out and maybe submit five drawings of some household objects that are, are, are around in your bedroom or kitchen or living room using a variety of media that you have to hand, for example, pens, pencils, crayons, etc. It gives us a bit of an idea. We, we might look at your portfolio and go, we think that you could be on a higher course. At the end, um, once you've accepted your offer near the end of this academic year, we will invite you to an applicant session. That's a great opportunity for you to meet your fellow students who you're going to be studying with and also the staff who will be delivering the course. And we'll also be able to show you examples from the particular course that you, you've been studying on. Uh, we'll be able to clarify things like timetables, start dates, etc. Obviously, this session has been um, quite challenging for everybody. Um, we've been working on the whole remotely, but we now do have some students attending college. Um, it's difficult to think about uh, or to gauge where exactly we'll be in August, September this coming year. But our aim is to have all or some um, of your sessions in college and some of it might be remote. At the end of the day, it depends what the Scottish Government allows us to do, but our aim is to have some, if not all, of your course being delivered on campus. Um, so fingers crossed. So submission deadlines, you know, we uh, advise people to apply February, March, going into April, um, but please don't worry at this time, we've still got lots of places left. <clears throat> So we recommend that you, uh, after this session, think about what I've said, make an application as soon as you can, submit it online. We'll then send you the portfolio stuff. Try and get it back to us in about 10 days. Um, the sooner the better, really, because then we will be able to offer you a place. I hope that makes sense. So we, we, we take submissions all the way through and, and even into the summer. OK, but sooner rather than later, it gives you the best opportunity. Now, I've gone through that fairly quickly, but I wanted to end up before we have a chat with Katie is to show you some um, uh, student stories. Um, this is a student, uh, Jonathan, uh, who won um, uh, a DNAD award, which is a big international uh, a student design competition. They're like the Oscars of the design world. Um, he was on the interactive design course, which is now called user experience. Um, this is a growth emerging area. It's linked to graphics, really, but it's more about how people interact with online platforms. Um, and, and it's a really exciting area to work into. But you can also see here we've got some of the logos of the people that we work with. You can see Glasgow School of Art there. And, you know, that should reassure you that if you do come and study with us, you're working in a, in a, in a well-respected area because the Glasgow School of Art don't let anybody put their logo on things. So that should reassure you. And there's also Duncan de Jordanston there, Harriet Watt and Grays, etc. A couple of quotes from past students. Um, you can read this here. Um, I, I really like this one. I think it's, it's really kind of upbeat, but it's talking really about that it's a collaborative experience. You know, we we want to work with you. We want to find out who you are as you grow with us. Um, and it's about experimenting and finding your path 
to help you succeed. Um, I think as well, it's it's worth reminding. I think sometimes when you're at school, it's like art and design. It's like, you know, something you just do. But, you know, our courses are hard work. They're challenging. We'll push you. But we'll definitely, um, if you work with us, get you to a place where you're much more confident about your work. Um, we're very aspirational of our students and this the, the, the image on the, the right here. Um, they went off to Glasgow School of Art. They've got their degree now, but this was their end of year exhibition um, from Foundation Diploma. Um, but it's about being getting you ready for the next steps of whatever they're going to be for you. Now, there's a couple of links here that take you to our end of year publications where you can see all of the students work uh, from last year. Uh, obviously, we couldn't do uh, physical exhibitions, but if you click on these links, you can find them on the website as well. You'll be able to go in and have a look at the work um, of both our HND and this one is for our UAL courses. I've also put a link into our um, UAL Facebook page and you can go and see loads of images uh, from the past and also our Instagram account for the foundation diploma. So really, uh, what is it that we're wanting from you or offering you? Um, I suppose it's a partnership. Um, it's about we're wanting to meet um, experimental, innovative, uh, imaginative uh, students, take them through uh, a, a journey of working with other colleges uh, across Europe, um, joining in live projects, trips to London, uh, we did one to Milan, but unfortunately that one got cancelled. And then the real reason is that we're wanting that five years, 10 years down the line, you become uh, a, a sculptor, an illustrator, a fashion designer, a painter. Um, and we're very good at that. We've got a strong um, uh, reputation for helping you um, get to the bit of what your career aim is. So I've put a few things here about why should you choose the School of Art and Design. Um, a lot of you might have put um, applications in for University Art College and you know we, we wish you well with that. A lot of our students are doing that. But please also apply to us as a, as, as a plan A, A plus, A plus plus. Um, don't see it as a plan B. I always think plan B is uh, if you're changing your mind and then you want to become an engineer. Um, applying to University Art College, applying to us should all be part of your plan A and giving yourself as much options. Um, if you get further education funding, you get free materials and an art pack. We can help you get into first, second, third year of a degree um, and you get to work in you know, specialist art studios and there's about 30 spaces across the college that are just for art and design. So there's lots of reasons why you should consider um, applying to us um, and, and, and studying. So before I finish up and I'm going to sort of uh, introduce you to Katie and then I'm, while she's talking, I'm going to show you through her portfolio. Please remember, you know, apply to what course you feel that you want to. But please remember there is a likelihood that we will then offer you either a UAL diploma or an NC before you, you, you progress onto an HND. It's common, uh, it's happened to most of the staff when we go back uh, over our careers. Um, and please trust uh, our judgment on that because it's not to disadvantage you, it's actually to set you up in the best way so you can achieve. Um, and the uh, clipping um, on the right hand side here is from one of our past foundation students, Annie, who has just recently graduated from the Glasgow School of Art last year. Um, and I really like the bit where she talks about, she goes, I go back to what I learned at Edinburgh College and it is this method of learning through making that led me to discover my car carving abilities. And then she says, studying the School of Art and Design at Edinburgh College was absolutely the best educational experience pre for preparing me for degree level study. And I promise you, I didn't pay her to say that. She said she said it of her, her own volition. So I'm just going to stop sharing now. And come back to 
the page. <coughs> Does that mean stop sharing, guys? Yeah. OK, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, Katie's portfolio. And as we look at it, we can then uh, ask Katie just to sort of talk us through it. OK. I'm just making sure I've got it up. OK, have we got that, guys? Yeah, Claire, can you give me a thumbs up? Brilliant, OK. So um, what I'll do is I'll scroll through this as we're chatting, Katie, but um, I just thought it would be good in the first instance if you could just describe to us um, what, were, you know, what your journey was that ended up with you studying with us uh, on the Foundation Diploma. Cool. OK, so hi, I'm, hi. Um, I applied to the school, school. Um, um, and I applied for a PhD for illustration, uh, but I didn't get it. And they actually referred me to the foundation course, um, and I was really happy, actually, that they chose to do that. Um, I was at first a bit disappointed that I didn't get into the HND, but actually having done the foundation course, um, and having experienced it, I am so glad that I have done this before the HND. I would have been really out of my depth doing the HND um, without this preparation because it's really helped me develop an understanding for the creative practice and um, the development process. When looking back at my portfolio that I put in for the uh, HND illustration, I can now see that actually I put in a lot of final pieces and not a lot of development work. And that's actually what's the really important part of the process. Um, and that's what um, the lecturers all really push um, you to explore is the experimentation and trying to get out of your comfort zones. Um, and that's how you discover new things that you really like. So yes, I really enjoyed the course. Thanks, Katie. Um, I'm just showing this is the portfolio that Katie has now submitted um, after studying foundation for her HND and she just found out earlier on from me that she's been successful. So um, this is a successful portfolio. So this is the work that she's done on the foundation course. Um, what, what would you say the key things that you've learned over the year are Katie? Um, I think mainly the importance of experimentation. Um, along the foundation course, there have been a lot of areas which I've been not so secure in. Um, so, for instance, the sculpture, like the one you're seeing right now, and also the textiles, for instance, they're both areas which I never would have thought that I would have enjoyed or actually gained anything from, but having done them, um I a lot of the experimentation that I did within that and actually I was it's really been helpful for my illustration process and having done that um I've gained a lot of skills on problem solving and how I can twist the brief and the um assignment that were given to fit into my comfort zones a bit more and to twist it to my strengths so it's been a really good course for pushing me out of those creative boundaries I had. I was working very tight before this course, um, but as we've gone through, um, even in my illustration work, it's definitely improved me becoming a lot more confident and loose with the work that I do. Thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm just going through here. It's some of these I'm just noticing that the um, the way that you've titled these, but you can see um, that in Katie's portfolio here, there's multiple images, but also what you can see is this clear development. There's research, um, both visual uh, for like source material, but there's also bits where she's been looking at other artists, but then she's showing various, um, I suppose, um, alternative solutions, trying things in different ways uh, and multiple images. But you can see as well, this visual communications one that I'm showing you, this is just a three week um, project. So 
Katie, what, what's it like in terms of, you know, you get a brief normally on, I think, a Monday or, or a Tuesday now, uh, and you, you get three weeks to do it in. Was that quite different from school or? Yes. So actually, when I was looking back at the schoolwork that I did uh, for higher art, um, I was looking back and I was like, I can't believe that it took me a whole year to do all of that stuff because actually that amount of work that I did for my hire is the amount of work I would do in about a week on this course. So it's definitely you're encouraged to do a lot of work, but it's really to push you to get better. And that's how you improve is by doing work all the time. And so having the um, the really short deadlines, you know, we had two day projects some days um, and the, the three week ones as well. It was just a really great way to um, push you to, I suppose, not be too precious with your work as well. Um, and to be open and accepting of mistakes that you make along the way, because not everything is going to be perfect. But actually, you know, at the end of the day, you're still going to have a result and you're still going to have learned something. Yeah, I'm, I'm just showing here on the screen the two day projects. There's one here in sculpture. <clears throat> and I think it's, you know, for advice, for, you know, if you if your guys are putting together a portfolio, you can see that there's some sketchbook work uh, playing around with ideas at the beginning and then some experimentation with materials. And that's just with a bar of soap. Um, and remember that all of our students uh, have been doing this at home in their in their bedrooms, living rooms, kitchens, gardens, garages. Um, uh, and also here's a two day painting workshop. Uh, uh, um, you know, that shows where she's been working as well. So a desktop, uh, uh, I suppose, a, a, a glimpse of her studio at home. So I think it's good that, you know, you can see how she's laying this out. Um, she also included her higher art and design, which is very good. But it's interesting, you know, that you're saying, Katie, that did you include these bits in your one from the previous year? I did, yeah. And actually, when I included them in my other portfolio, I thought, oh, these are really great. And I've done lots of work here. And, you know, I was feeling really confident about it, which looking back is just, no, I don't feel like that anymore. <laughs> so you've certainly, you know, it's like being a bit of a, a steep learning curve, but it's fast uh, and, and you've developed your skills as you've gone along. Um, but, you know, it's still it's still worthy and you've put it into your portfolio, which is good. But then you can have pages like this, which is, um, you know, they were given a project to do a wee folding book and to go out and to do some location drawing. But you can see there's a lot of what we call annotation here. Um, there's bits of writing that are explaining um, you know, Katie's thought process, etc. Katie, could you share a little bit about what it's been like working from home and working online? Yeah, well, it was definitely a bit awkward and challenging at first. Um, you know, I never, I didn't really feel comfortable talking in the classes at first and it was just all just a bit weird. But actually, all the lectures have been really um, accommodating and understanding of the situation that we're in. And they've been open to taking criticism. And it's been really great to kind of, because we've been learning together about how to make it work. Um, and so I'm kind of now, when I'm getting near the end of the year, I am in a place where, you know, I'm actually very comfortable learning online. And it has been um, a, a good experience learning online despite having you know not being in the studio I've still been able to interact properly with the other students and you know get uh, feedback from them and so yeah it's it's still been good. <laughs> well that but that is reassuring to hear I think we've all learned a lot this year but it just shows you I think if you are a creative person um, that then we can overcome a situation like this and and I think the work that you've produced is a testament to that um, both yourself and the staff. I'd just like to point out um, folks if you look up at the top of the screen you can see how Katie has titled her portfolio so she's got her name then a dash uh, and she's applied this year to HND illustration 
uh, and that's all you need to do. So you just put your name, uh, we hyphen, and then UAL Foundation or UAL Level 3 uh, uh, or whatever the name of the course is. Just before we come back to opening it up to some questions, um, this is what Katie's put in at the end. She's put her SQA certificate. I've blanked out what, what she's got there just for her own privacy, but um, she's got very good, very good <laughs> grades and hires. But she's also put in a short uh, personal statement about why she wanted to apply um, to the HND, what, what she believes she's going to get out of it and what she what, what, what she could bring to it and her understanding of it. Because really what your portfolio is, and if we just scroll back up to the top, is that you've got to imagine somebody else looking at your portfolio and they're trying to gauge, has this person not just got the the artistic skills because you know most people are uh, uh, artistic it's are you showing that you understand the creative process in depth to study at h and d level um are you showing that they have faith in that you can work uh to a two-day project a, a three-week project um, and that gives them the confidence to go, yeah, this person's ready to take the next step. So if you apply for an HND and you don't get an offer, just think about does your work look like this yet? If it doesn't, that doesn't mean that you're not good enough and you're not creative enough. It just means it's not the next step for you. The next step is maybe coming on to our UAL level three diploma or the level three foundation diploma to allow you to then pull together a portfolio like this. Um, so that's the best way to look at it. Um, and most of the people that I have, uh, um, not just students, I'm talking about the staff as well, including myself. Um, I did a foundation course before I did my degree at Edinburgh College of Art. Um, the majority of staff have. It's a very normal thing to do. So don't see it as a negative. Um, it is a positive thing. Nobody's saying you're not good enough uh, or not creative enough. What they're saying is this is not the next step for you. The next step for you is to do this course to have fun and explore and produce a great portfolio like this. So I'm going to stop sharing there and bring you back to the screen. Um, and <clears throat> what we can do is to open it up to any questions that you might have. Um, and we've got one come in already, um, and that is what course progression routes would you recommend? So depending on what your interest is, um, uh, I think it, I think it's the, the, the best thing to do is to apply. Unless you're very experienced already, if I if I was advising most people coming from school, whether they were doing hires or advanced hires. If you were doing hires, I would advise you to apply for the UAL Level 3 Diploma, maybe the Foundation, um, because that allows you the opportunity to go to most of the four art colleges for um, first year. Ed Edinburgh University is slightly different, uh, and it's explained in the, in the map if you look at that. But basically, um, I suppose it's it's about doing a portfolio course, finding out where your strengths are, but the, because the progression routes are so um, uh, diverse, uh, you know, we've got people who've done foundation course, they've studied sculpture with me and, and some colleagues, but then they've got into study second year interior design um, because of their portfolio showed that they were imaginative and creative and playing around with materials. So I suppose the best thing about progression routes is there, there are many. We have fantastic partnerships. Come on to one of our level three diploma, level three foundation, and then you'll find your way. Um, somebody's put in here, uh, when will we hear back after submitting our portfolio? We're going through them now. We, we went through some just before Easter. We're doing some uh, at the moment with our own internal students. So they're not getting their theirs until uh next week um i told katie 
because she was helping me out today, but they're getting theirs next week. So um, we, we you normally get uh, an answer within uh, two weeks. It, it could be quicker than that uh, because we do them on a rolling basis. So don't panic um, if you haven't applied yet. There's plenty of time to apply. Get your portfolio in. We've got lots of places. Um, uh, you know, and then you'll hear back. But I, I would suggest that, you know, a workaround would be two weeks to get your um, uh, result back. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, Neil, we do. Can I can I just check? You were just covered about application submitting. We've got someone asking. Oh, okay. had, yeah, we've had a couple about portfolios, about they've submitted it a little while ago. So oh, yes, I've seen that now. About yeah. Time, yeah, just a bit concerned about time scales, February yeah. and about a month ago. Yeah, we, we did, just to let you know, apologies for that. We did um, plan to have our uh, some of the, the, the ones that were in by then out just um, before we finish for Easter. However, I'm not sure whether you're aware, but that we had some industrial action in, in the colleges. Uh, across Scotland, you know, it wasn't anything particularly to do with us that had an impact on it. But you should hear next week because we're now back from Easter. The industrial action has stopped. We're now processing them. So thanks for bearing with us. You you should hear your outcome uh, next week. I, I don't know whether they can if, if you can send me uh, a message. Um, I can put in my e email. Um, what we'll do, what we'll do is we'll I'll filter them for you. So I'll put yeah. the events email address in, and I'll filter them for you, and I'll okay. send them across to you. All right. So what we'll do is we'll pick up from that, and then you know I can look at it and make sure that we've got it. But basically, there was a, a slight delay to do with industrial action. That's now finished, and they will be getting sent out from Tuesday. We're on holiday on Monday, but we're getting we're sending them out on on Tuesday. Um, so we've got one for Katie. Uh, what did you most enjoy about your course? I think the thing I enjoyed most was um, the range of students that um, I was working alongside because I was coming from uh, obviously high school where everyone's the same age as me. Um, but, you know, working in a college environment, you do have you have people from loads of different backgrounds. Um, people who are studying a range of different specialisms as well. And so just having that variety um, is a really good catalyst for your creativity. And so I actually found when I was looking at what the other people around me were doing, I was thinking, yeah, I mean, that doesn't really, that's not illustration work, but I can get a lot of inspiration and ideas from what they've done. Um, so just having the whole range of people around me, that was really, really um, exciting. OK, um, I've got another one here. Thanks, Katie. Um, I sent my follow at the end of March where I forgot to name the file with the name of the course I wanted to study. Haven't heard back yet. Should I send it with the course name? And if so, I should send it again. Um, the, the reason why you've not heard is, is to do with the industrial action and that's now over. Now, so we should have got your portfolio. Um, the staff are going through them this week. I'm processing them on Tuesday with our student records. Um, so you should be hearing next week. D don't panic if you don't hear on the Tuesday, but you should hear by the end of next week. It's just that, that, that there's been a delay there. And again, if you want to send us, um, uh, if Claire can tell me who that person is afterwards, yeah, th then we'll be able to make sure that it's there. But don't panic. Yeah, yeah we'll please, have got it. Please email, please email, because I can't actually see your name because you posted it anonymously. So please email me and I'll get that across to Neil. OK, so if you just use the email there, events at edinburghcollege.ac.uk, uh, and then we'll pick up on it. But, you know, the, the likelihood is it's there, it's fine. They'll be processing it, i.e. reviewing them, and, th and then we'll send them out to you. So apologies for, for any delay, but there the was nothing we could really, it was out of our hands, I'm afraid. Um, any other questions? Um, I think for, we've got for one even. more, one more about is the cor course offered full time or part time? 
OK, it depends which one it is, but all, all of the ones that I've spoken to you there are what we call a full time course. Um, uh, we, we look around uh, so for a UAL course, they're normally in. I suppose two and a half days in the studios. They then have a one hour tutorial. Um, they will then get some critical studies, which is your English that helps you with that. So you're basically looking roughly three days for a full time course. HNDs can be slightly less contact with a lecturer, but you have access to the studios and self directed time. So um, all of the courses that I've talked about are full time. Um, the foundation actually has some more hours on it because they get some life drawing. Um, but. They, I suppose they require five days a week commitment. But in fact, you might be with your lecturers and your LDT, your tutorial uh, and your critical studies for maybe three days in total. If, I hope that makes sense. I'm just scrolling down, uh, Claire, to see if there are any others. Uh, we do, we do, we do. They're just coming in on yeah. the second. So can we look back a recording of this demonstration or maybe past ones as I have missed the music direction? Yeah, that's OK. That's probably because there's a few going on at the one time. Yes, they're all going to be posted on our website early next week, so you'll be able to go on to that and we'll make sure everybody that was registered will get an email point them, pointing them to the right place. So that's absolutely fine. OK, that's great. Um, another one coming. So what progression routes would you recommend for adult returners? Um, if you're an adult returner, we I think the average age in the college actually is uh, I think people think um, it's just 16 to uh, 19, 20 year olds. I think the average age is in mid 20s, but we have students on the course and Katie will tell you we we have people who are 16, 17 and then we go right up to people in their 50s and 60s. Uh, I'm not sure if I had anyone in their 70s uh, on the course at the moment, but we have in the past. But basically we're open and in, in, in it's mixed uh, age group. So that's a really fantastic thing. I think about the courses. Um, it depends where you are. Sometimes an adult returner can come and they're brand new to the world of art and design. And, and if that's the case, I would be suggesting that you would be maybe UAL level two or maybe an NC or a level three, depending on you know what kind of portfolio you might have been doing something maybe as a leisure pursuit, but actually really quite competent. So we can put you in at that. We've had other people who've come in as adult returners who have a, a you know, people who went to art college um, maybe 20, 30 years ago, but had to leave because maybe they were bringing up a family or they went into a different career, but then we can slot them in uh, um, at an appropriate, maybe higher level. So all of this is dependent really on your portfolio. There are entry requirements for, for as you go up the courses, but the important thing is it's your portfolio. If you apply, you only apply for one course, choose the one that you're interested in, you know, and that you're passionate about, give it a go, pull the portfolio together, apply to it. Think about what I've said though, about what's maybe realistic. Then we'll look at your portfolio and we'll advise which one you should go to. Um, I hope that helps, um, but we, we, we have a, a wide range of uh, age groups. Uh, uh, I've applied for the fashion and textiles UAL level three, but haven't submitted my portfolio yet. Am I still in time? Yes, um, I would encourage you to get it in as soon as possible. Um, you know, spend some time. Think about the advice that we've given you. Um, as far as I know, there are still places on that course, um, but sooner rather than later is better. If you if you leave it for another three, four, five weeks, you, we could have run out of places by then. But if you apply now, uh, I, I'm sorry, send in your portfolio now, it, you're in with a good chance. Um, there are, I know there are still places. Um, I would be travelling from five. Could someone advise me? Re travel. Um, well. Our courses are at Granton, so 
I know that there are buses that come down from the city centre. Uh, so there's the number 16, 14, the number 8. I'm not sure whether there are ones that come in via that way, but I think if you go to the college website and find the bit about um, our campuses, there'll be a bit where you look for the grant and campus page and that should give you the travel links. I think that's correct, Claire. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. And there's also the travel bursary for people coming a long way. Oh yeah, well, it's good that you're here, Katie. That's mm -hmm. right. So if that that's if you're studying on a further education course, so a UAL or an NC, and you apply for your student funding uh, for a further education course, you can get some money to help you with travel. It's different if you apply for HND because that's SAS and that's to do with the, the, the awards that they give you, but you can get help. So would you recommend S5 students to continue to S6 or would benefit going to do a portfolio course or just finish school first? That's kind of one where it, it's really up to yourself. Um, it suits some people to, um, <clears throat> to stay on at school. Um, Katie, I think that that was the one thing that you did, wasn't it? You you were humming and hawing of whether to stay on to Essex and then you decided to come to college. Is that right? Yeah, it was a very last minute decision for me to go to college instead, but it was definitely the right one for me. Um, so I did S5 and then I decided to leave and not do S6. And that was because I really knew that art and design was what I wanted to do. And so I didn't want to uh, be stuck in S6 doing other hires or advanced hires that actually weren't going to be beneficial to me. And so I decided, you know what, a college course that was just specifically art and design um, would actually be a better route because I'd be able to spend more time doing the thing that I really want to do. Mm -hmm. So I suppose it it's really depends how you feel about it. Um, we get some students who come to us uh straight they don't do um you know they they come after the national fives so they don't stay on at school and do hires or advanced hires they just come straight to us and do ual2 or ual3 um i think it's about what you feel ready for um the benefits of coming to college is that like katie's saying you then your whole timetable um is art and design that's all you're doing um, and then your critical studies class, which enables you to get, um, you know, a, a, an SQA qualification in English communications to help. But um, I would advise you to talk to whoever you stay at home with, you know, um, mum, dad, guardian, you know, other, 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 other peers. Uh, speak to your to your teachers, maybe, you know, um, it, it, there are benefits from coming if you're ready for that, um, but you can come from National Fives upwards. We take students from 16 uh, upwards and that's the benefit. So somebody's saying um, they're a little bit confused. I haven't heard of any of these as an option for my, from my school. Is this something you could do after Essex, then go to uni the next year or, in, or instead of first year? So yes, um, you, you can stay on at school and do S5 and S6. Uh, a lot of, a lot of students come to us um, uh, after they've done S6. Then we look at your folio uh, and so for example you could be like uh, Katie who's done the foundation diploma so she does one year and then she's staying with us to do a two-year HND and that's the, the route, route she chose to go down. Um, she made, do you mind me saying Katie, she made an application through UCAS to study at one of the art colleges and then she decided that she wasn't going to go ahead with it because she wanted to stay and do an HND before that to grow in confidence. I actually personally feel that uh, that was a good decision, but also I think you're more than capable, Katie, and your portfolio is very strong. I think I think you you may have had a really good result with uni, but it, but it's always a balance um, about what's the right thing for you. Um, what we find is a lot of our students when they come to us they will stay for us for quite a while, even when they get an offer to university because they prefer it. Uh, they want to grow a bit. They want to establish themselves and be sure um, 
university is great, but it's different. You, you don't get the lecturers as much. It's uh, they, you're working at a higher level. So we're this great bit in the middle where we're an art school, but you've got time to breathe and enjoy and get supported uh, before you make the next um, step in your career. So it, it, it's up to you, but there are benefits both ways. Um, so should we apply through UCAS or through the college for some of the courses? Thank you. OK, uh, good question. All of our courses you apply through the college website. OK, so none of our courses in art and design are through UCAS, uh, and that's because we don't do any degrees yet. Uh, our students stay with us and then maybe go off into first, second, third year of a degree, depending on what course they're on. But your application uh, is through the college website. So it's straightforward. You go to the college website, go to courses, pick art and design, scroll down and you find the one, for example, h and Visual Communication Illustration. You click on it, then you find the apply button, you apply, you fill all the stuff out. It's like you're date of birth and if you've got any learner support needs please tell us um, because we can help you with that um, you put your qualifications in you submit it it then comes to us we send you the letter and the guidance um, uh, about how to put your portfolio in as soon as we get your portfolio within a week two weeks we'll have reviewed it and make you an offer and then you accept it Oh, that's great. Claire's showing you the, the page. That's what it looks like. So you just click on one of the ones that you like. Um, which one's Claire going to choose? Yeah, so NC Architecture and Interior Design, and then Words Away. It's going slow on a Friday afternoon, I think. It does take a while to go through sometimes. There's a lot of traffic on it at the moment. OK, I'll keep talking while, whilst that, that's whirring away. Um, I'm just checking to see if there's any other questions have come in. I think we're there. Yeah, we are. Has anyone got any other questions for Neil or Katie? Can we do a last call just before we go? So uh, our, our message to you is, um, you know, we're really keen to receive your application. Um, working as an artist or a designer in the future is fun, it's challenging, it's rewarding, um, it's a growth area. You know, Edinburgh is a fantastic city to study art and design in. Um, you know, it's a capital city, it's small, compared to these, to these other large cities, but we have loads of galleries and design agencies that we work with. Um, and come along and, and we will challenge your perceptions of what art and design is um, and help you on that journey. Because that's, um, we see it as a partnership. It's uh, you come and work with us and then we find your way and your path forward uh, um, to help you in your career. Um, but do apply you know, in a timely way. Um, please don't leave it for another month or so because places can and will uh, uh, run out. So apply as soon as possible. Get your portfolio in. Um, can we send this out? Um, the 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 presentation, um, Claire. Of course we can. We'll arrange that. Not okay. a problem. So we'll send that because I don't think I've got the option to post it in here. But thanks for taking time out. Any other questions, just get in touch with us. Um, follow the guidance. Trust us on which course we, we, we offer it to you. Um, uh, and get working on that portfolio and come and have some fun with us. Neil, just quickly before we go, there's someone who's just posted that they're an adult returner. Um, can that person send me an email to events at edinburghcollege.co.uk? Because I think you could probably do with having a chat to them. All right, OK. Um, 
Yeah, so, I can see that question. So the person who's asked um, uh, about UK school qualifications, etc. If you email the events at Edinburgh College dot uh, AC dot UK, then Claire will pass on your thing to me and then we can have a proper conversation about it. I hope that helps. Excellent. OK, so thanks, guys. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye and good luck with your applications.